the policies that are now being implemented in response to COVID-19 will have long-term effects. So it is critical that in creating and implementing these policies, we use the latest and most relevant research. Some urgent questions we need to answer are, in the context of COVID-19, is it possible to create policies that result in doing good and doing well? Who is making this happen and how? What research is available in the field of management specifically that help us answer these questions? Hi, I am Herman Aguinness from George Washington University. I am fascinated by the potential of corporate social responsibility policies to change organizations and the world for the better. So over the past 15 years, my students, collaborators, and I have been conducting research about CSR. Given the COVID-19 crisis, this research and its implications for policymaking are now particularly timely and useful. I am delighted to deliver this keynote for the 2020 Behavioral Science and Policy Association Conference in Washington, DC. This is part one of a two-part keynote, and it is pre-recorded. Second part will be an interactive and real-time question and answer session, and I am very much looking forward to that. Today, I will share with you how we can use research on CSR to create policies that are as effective as possible. But I am going to focus on an aspect of CSR that is not usually discussed, a behavioral perspective on corporate social responsibility. This is how individuals experience CSR. In other words, thinking about CSR in terms of individuals not just organizations or society. To do so, I am going to describe some of our research results and how they can be used for policymaking. One, the types of CSR actions that governments and organizations can implement and their effectiveness. Two, the impact that CSR can have in the organizations you work for. Three, how can we use CSR to create different types of policies that have a positive and lasting impact on society. Let me begin with the first point. Mm -hmm. Our research uncovered that organizations implement one of two types of CSR policies and programs. First, what we call embedded CSR, or what we call peripheral CSR. To give you an example that illustrates our research, if you visit Google's website, you can read their mission statement, which I am showing on this slide. For example, Google operations are designed to get the most out of technology without using more resources. How do they do that? They create efficient data centers. They accelerate their transition to carbon-free energy, create sustainable workplaces, build better devices and services, and empower users with technology that help ensure a cleaner, healthier future for generations to come. This strategic orientation, guided by Google's mission, has helped Google become one of the fastest firms to respond to COVID-19. Of course, they have used different versions of the Google logo in their website to support and thank medical employees, those cleaning hospitals or grocery workers. But they went much further and teamed up with their main competitor, Apple, to contact trace COVID-19 and embed a feature in iPhones and Android devices to enable users to track infected people they have come close to. Going back to my statement about the two types of CSR uncovered by our research, Google has realized that positive outcomes can be achieved if CSR is integrated throughout the organization. This is what we call embedded CSR. When CSR is embedded, an organization's values become real and they translate into every activity the company does. This value-oriented way of doing things has translated into Google being the leader of the best companies to work for, for several years in a row. On the other hand, in many organizations, CSR is not embedded, but it is peripheral. This means 
that organizations may engage in CSR efforts, but they don't do this in a way that is strategic. It is only done on the side. It is a nice thing to do, but this is not part of their core business. We're just doing this because it's something nice on the side, such as establishing a fund foundation that engages in philanthropy. In the extreme, peripheral CSR can just be window dressing or just greenwashing. Here's the thing. Our research uncovered that employees very quickly, very quickly understand and know whether their organization is engaging in embedded or peripheral CSR. You can read more about the difference between embedded and peripheral CSR in our article published in the journal called Industrial and Organizational Psychology. So what are some takeaways of this research for you? First, embedded CSR involves an organization's core competencies and integrates CSR within a firm strategy, routines, and operations. And therefore, it affects all employees and also external stakeholders. Why? Because embedded CSR fulfills internal and external stakeholder needs and also enhances consumer and employee pride and identification, value congruence, meaningfulness in work and overall perceptions that the company is doing fair and good things. What does our research say about why you should create and implement policies that involve embedded versus peripheral CSR? Number one, it improves employee engagement, job satisfaction, organizational commitment, attraction and retention. Two, it increases consumer purchase intentions. Three, it improves reputation, societal benefits, and environmental benefits. Now, let's move on to question number two. What is the impact that CSR can have in the organization you work for? More than a decade ago, my colleague Ante Glavas and I reviewed 588 journal articles and 102 books and book chapters on CSR. It took us quite some time to do, but it was very rewarding because we read pretty much everything the researchers had published about CSR. Then we summarized the key conclusions in this Journal of Management article. Let me share with you now some of the main conclusions from this article because they're really informative about the impact of CSR. Employee CSR engagement is stronger when CSR is aligned with the employee's personal values. And the higher the commitment from supervisors to CSR, the more effective CSR it is. Two, the impact of CSR on employees is stronger the more employees feel that their supervisors are committed to ethics and care about equity. Three, CSR increases employee engagement, retention, enrolled performance, and commitment. So far, we discussed that implementing embedded compared to peripheral CSR policies leads to better results. Also, we discussed the effects of CSR from an individual perspective. Let's now move on to the third and final question. How can we use CSR to create different types of policies in firms, cities, states, and entire countries? This is a quote from Fred Kaufman from Google. Consistent with this statement, our research explains why, when done right, CSR expands the notion of work to go beyond a task and provides an ideal conduit for individuals to seek and find meaningfulness through work. First, consider who your employees are and their values. As you can see in this figure from our 2019 Journal of Management article, we understand how individuals experience CSR and meaningfulness differently through work because of their different work orientations, moral identities, and environmental values, and also communal values. For example, individuals who have a stronger calling orientation stronger moral identity, environmental and communal values will experience more meaningfulness through work in firms with embedded CSR. However, sense making not only takes place within an individual, but it, also, it is also a social process that is influenced by others in the organization. Therefore, 
If you want your CSR policies to have a real impact, you should ensure that CSR is more embedded as opposed to peripheral, and it is also implemented bottom up and not top down. Finally, you should also take into account family, external stakeholders, and national culture. The relation between CSR and experience meaningfulness through work will be stronger for individuals with family members who place greater value on CSR, employees who have a greater degree of contact with external stakeholders, who are beneficiaries of CSR, and individuals in more collectivistic societies. If you want to learn more about these sense-making factors, please read our 2019 article in the Journal of Management, which is available on hermanagamis.com. To summarize my presentation today, what are some takeaways for policymaker? Number one, one size does not fit all. Top-down CSR does not work, which explains the documented variance in CSR effectiveness ranging from positive to neutral to even negative. Two, organizations and government agencies can use human resource management practices such as training, to make employees aware of CSR, which is as a result of that, that could lead to employee re-engagement through finding more meaningfulness in work. For example, a team of engineers at Google may think they're just tackling an aspect of engineering and approach work as a series of specific tasks to be done. However, once they become aware of their contribution to positively affecting the world, they may become re-energized and find new meaningfulness through their work. Number three, our model also addresses what we refer to as the dark side of CSR. Consider a situation where CSR is peripheral and forced top down on employees. Leaders could be pushing for employees to engage in CSR, and at the same time, performance management systems may encourage a focus on short term financial results. In such situations where CSR is peripheral, symbolic, push down on employees, CSR can truly, truly backfire. In closing, a, a behavioral perspective on CSR means that our research aims at explaining why and how individuals experience CSR and seek and find meaningfulness through work. So we're able to learn about when and why employees experience CSR differently resulting in more or less positive outcomes for themselves, their organizations, and also external stakeholders. This is critical information for federal, state, and local governments, as well as organizations of all types and industries that are interested in implementing CSR policies that have beneficial results for internal and also external stakeholders. Thank you for watching this presentation. And I very much look forward to our real-time and interactive session. Thank you.